Well, man, it's great to be back here on another Friday night. Lake Fort Marina, good times. All are welcome. We do these every other Friday night at 6 p.m. Um, I've had an interesting week this week. Yeah. Interesting you've, week. You've had a rough week. I would say yeah. rough is a good word. You know, that's one way to look at it. And I'm choosing to look at it a completely different way because for as bad as it's gone, it's gone as good it's as it can go. It's called PMA, positive mental It's attitude. gone as good as it can go. So I had an accident this week with the boat behind me, which is never good. The other day it was raining real hard, like raining real hard in the morning. Y'all remember that night it rained like six inches or whatever? Uh, well, the ne I think it was the next morning, maybe the morning before that. Maybe it was the morning before that. That morning we had a real hard line of thunderstorms come through here. So we pushed the trip back a little bit. And I was leaving town and I just pulled out of the gas station and I was headed down the road and a small car was in front of me and it stopped pretty quick. And I didn't see it the moment that it stopped. I was grabbing something in my seat. But, uh, like just a split second, man, and there was no stopping that boat on that soaking wet road. And I cracked him pretty good and banged up his trunk and banged up the front of my truck. And uh, the boat even slid forward a little bit and kind of bent the roller where the boat attaches to the trailer, you know, on the hook up there. And so I'm going, golly, man, all right, I'm out. You know, I, I get no money for today being a fishing guy. And who knows how long this is going to take to get all this stuff taken care of. You know, I'm in my head. I'm kind of panicking a little bit about mm -hmm. financials for supporting my wife and kids here, because if I'm out for a couple of weeks, that's that's a bad deal in springtime. And uh, first, shout out to Nautical Mom Marine. They got it done quick. That was unbelievable. The same day, the boat was back at my house that afternoon. The boat was done at like three o'clock because I was picking mine yeah. up, and they're like, "Hey, we got Billy's done." Yep, they had it ready that I got it to them about 11 o'clock that morning and they had it done that evening. So if you guys want a boat dealer that stands behind their product and goes absolutely out of their way to take care of you on service, Nautical Mom Marine is the one I recommend and that's why. Um, it's something people always ask me, they always ask, you know, what brand, if you're going to buy a boat, what brand of boat would you buy? And my advice to everybody here and you guys watching home is not as important as what boat you buy, but where you buy it from mm -hmm. or who you buy it from. And Nautical Mile, I mean, my boat was in there the same day. So my boat had maintenance and all that other stuff and the trolling motor had some issues and they got it all done on my one day yeah. off and got yours done. And man, that's 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 there, pretty incredible. There, so I've never seen a service business that operates on the level they do with just They're how really much good. they care about taking care of whatever your need is. Like they understand for me and Ronnie, like, we gotta get yeah. out and they, they get us out. And if you're a guy that has a little more time, but you need it by a certain date, you got a trip. Like they're going to do everything in their power to move heaven and earth to accommodate whatever your needs are, and it's just amazing. Um, the other thing is, man, they're doing some. They're actually doing some customization of Skeeters. So is that they're doing that? They're doing okay. that. So they have some custom uh, tricked out Skeeters that I'm actually going to be showing some photos of. Um, they're doing a uh, what they're calling a carbon custom, where they're putting some carbon fiber highlights on the boat nice. and it looks the first one they're doing looks amazing like amazing hmm. so uh, if you got anything that you want to do and like really like you want to buy your dream boat and trick it out and do all that man nautical mile marine in tyler texas is the way to go all right didn't mean to go into a whole nautical mile set but man they're awesome um the other thing is i just the support that i get from guys like all of y'all all of you guys that watch the videos come to the seminars all of you guys out there that are watching uh on, on youtube or wherever you're watching um, you know, my truck was out of commission because we had that accident, and I had two people, two people, offer me a truck to use till my truck got fixed for free. That's awesome. And that's just, man, that's so humbling and so amazing that two different people were like, here you go. Especially yeah. after you just rear ended somebody. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> and it wasn't even raining. It got the rain. It was raining. It, rain. it, like, <laughs> it was foggy. It was sunny right here. Yeah, but that just, you know, and that speaks volumes to all of you guys that are here tonight. That, that I know you guys watch a lot of the YouTube stuff as well. And all of you guys that are watching out there, man, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys for helping us build this community and, and sharing it with other people and just doing what we said we were going to do from day one, which was, you know, build this thing based on helping each other catch more fish and loving our fellow man. And I, I felt the love this week. There was no doubt. I need a hug, Billy. I'm sorry, buddy. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. felt like that was... You're sweating. It's been an awesome day. It's been a tra it was this could have been really tragic and went as good as it go. All right, let's talk about fishing because the fishing's awesome too. Fishing's unbelievable. The fishing is really good. Anybody really fish good. today? Nobody fished today? <laughs> no. okay. Yeah, I did. Uh, I fished today. I fished today. today. <laughs> did you have a good day on the lake? Yeah. I did. Oh, yeah. Man, it was a great day. 
We've had the last couple of days. We've been. We've had that. You know, it's Lake Fork. Like everybody that fishes Lake Fork enough has these yeah. stories. But like yesterday, we had two breakoffs, and today we just had several fish that we just couldn't get them in the boat. Mm-hmm. Like they just came unbuttoned. Um, and they're you, strong right now because that water. They are strong, um, and that's you know, especially out here with all this heavy cover mm-hmm. and these fish out here, they're beefed up. They're thick. You know, they're mm-hmm. strong. But yeah, the lake's fishing incredible, and, and we're getting to the time of year where. You know, there's a thing going on. It's just so much fun, and we want to talk to you guys about it. There's, uh, uh, what would you call it? The gizzard shad spawn? Is that what you call it? Or just a shad spawn? The, the shad spawn is what we'll call it. It's a shad spawn because they are both spawning yeah. right now, the gizzards and the thread fins. And, man, you get on these shallow windblown points. that we all, I know that a lot of you guys have followed us. I've heard us talk about these a lot. These shallow windblown points are kind of out there on the main lake. Um you know, loons can cue you into it. Sometimes her- herons can, blue herons can cue you into it. But um, it's a lot of fun, and there's a, there's a really fun way to catch them. Anybody like watch a fish blow up on your bait on top water? Anybody like that? Everybody, I think everybody likes that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's consensus. Everybody. I, we likes probably it. like it the least amount because that's the hardest one to get in the boat. <laughs> you lose a lot. Of fun. Yeah, you do. You that's do. the most stressful way to. To make sure the big one gets in. Well, Ronnie's really got, like, I'm catching some on that deal, but Mr. Ronnie Kelly, Captain Ron's guide service on Facebook, yep. uh, Captain Ron Big Bass on Instagram, full time Lake Fork guide. You can also find him at yourlakeforkguide.com as well. Um, Ronnie has got this top water deal, like, zeroed in. And he's got another oh, secondary man. deal. I don't know if he's going to talk about that, but go yeah, ahead. We'll talk about that. Let's talk about top waters. I got to go run and fetch you some okay. baits, but talk about the top waters and what you're using and why they're okay. biting and get into all that. Talk to you guys kind of about how I'm running my day. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to start over 2010. I'm sitting uh, down there in the marina one morning. And does anybody know Mark Pack by chance? Mark Pack was a hero of mine growing up. A lot of these Lake Fork guys were. Mark Pack said, hey, sit down right here. Let's talk for a minute, boy. And we sat down and we started to talk. Here you go. You see all these clay points out here? So you run around them clay points. Throw, throw a crank bait. Just go on. That crank, go to that clay point, that clay point, that clay point. That point. Just run around throw that crank bait. All that. You'll catch fish. So I took what Mark Pack said, and then a buddy of mine, Tom Main, who's, in my opinion, one of the best fishermen I've ever fished with. He's a Tyler local. He's a guy out on Lake Palestine. And he told me something one time. This is back 2008, 2009. I started guiding here then in 2009. He said, all you need to do is take a Carolina rig and run around that lake and look for clay points. And when I say clay points out here, you you guys are familiar with the lake. You know what I'm talking about. All these points that are kind of washed out a little bit, you can see the clay up on them. Uh, for the last few years, they've been kind of called shell beds. Um, and, and there's a lot of shell, but there's a lot of other stuff as well. And I was in construction, so I got a unique um, perspective on this. I got to see a lot of this dirt dug up in East Texas. When that sandy loam gets pulled up and you get down to that clay, there's a lot of rock in the clay. There's a lot of gravel in the clay. And so our lake's full of clay. Um, East Texas is full of clay. So these, these points have clay all over them. So I took what Mark Pack said, and I took what... Uh, Tom Main told me, and I ran with it. And Mark Pack opened my eyes to, to to one of the most amazing things I'd ever seen. And we're not talking over the last three, four, or five years. We're talking 2009, 2010, um, and it was unbelievable. To, and, and at the time, there there weren't a lot of people keyed in on this. Um, and so you could you could wake up early in the morning and meet your customer 15 minutes before daylight on a day like today when it's going to be bluebird skies, and you could take off and you could start hitting all these points, whether they're windblown or whether they're not. And you could find the shad would be sparkling, you know, little like diamonds glistening in the water. And there's sometimes there's birds and sometimes there's not. But if there's bait, there's generally going to be fish. And, and, and so what I'm doing right now, uh, Monday I had a guy and his wife that came out with me and they, they booked a half trip, which I let everybody know I'm not doing any more half day trips this time of year. I think it's, it's just it's just it's too risky. And so here, let, me, let me explain real quick. And I got to go because I got a ball game. But I want to explain to you guys what happened to me on Monday. I have I had a half day trip and I set a doctor's appointment that day, so I needed to be done at a certain time and I needed to be gone at a certain time. So it didn't allow me the opportunity to go hero or zero. And so a lot of times when you get on the main lake and you're running points and you're going to run all up and down the lake, it takes an eight to nine hour day. And when you when you try to put it in a four to four and a half hour day, sometimes it doesn't work out. So. I went back to my frog, and, and you guys that follow the channel and you guys here as well, you know that I kind of like to throw the frog. So we went through the frog, and we had about six or seven bites. Um, in fact, the guy had one fish that did three times. Um, I caught some fish, but my customers didn't boat any fish. They had opportunities, but they didn't boat any fish. And, I, and I, I thought to myself, 
you know, if it was a full day, would I have done that? And the answer is probably not. Um, and so, uh, so I ended up the next day, I ended up putting the big, big walking bait and hand me that the big one, the big one. So this bait right here is, is everybody's familiar with a super spook. So this bait is similar to a super spook. This is a, this is a, uh, six cents dogma and it's got a one knocker um, and it and this is basically a walking bait you get cutters in your pocket? Just go ahead and cut yeah. it off. You got cutters. There you go. Or just buy it. Um, and so I'm throwing a bait I, I'm throwing I'm actually throwing this bait right here. It's just it's a big walking bait. Okay, pencil bait stick bait Whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and that one's that one's real good to imitate those big bait fish. That's six cents dogma I don't remember the numbers. I think it's 116 or something like that. This is here's here's one size and that's the other So they got a big one and then a medium one um, You can get those at six cents fishing.com and if you go there if you punch in the code You're like Fort guide you get a 10% discount on anything you order so. so I'm starting my mornings out with this right here the shad are spawning and a lot of times you're gonna see the gizzard shad so during the time that, that 2009, 2010, I was running around all these points, throwing topwater square bills, that sort of thing, keying in on thread fin that were spawning. Um, as, the, as the days would go on, they would stop, the sun would come up, and that would slow down. Well, one thing I noticed that never did slow down is I would eventually, if I ran enough stuff, I would see these big shad, these big gizzard shad just go, and this is just what they did. They go, thunk. They don't actually make that sound, but in my mind they do. They go, thunk. <laughs> Out of the water, <laughs> and then there's something. There's a lot of things them. that happen in your mind, and only in your mind. Yeah. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> and you'll see like one, and then you'll see <laughs> if you're lucky. Has anybody ever seen that on this lake? I'm just out of curiosity. How many? How many of you guys fish this lake often? So we got. Do what? We're South here. Texas boys. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> um, so they got gizzard chat in California. Have y'all ever seen that? Where you see one bait fish that's you know. Eight to twelve inches long that shoots out of the water, and there's one or two bass after it. Okay, well that happens a lot out here, and that's a really special deal. And a lot of people that fish out here have never seen that. Um, I've been fortunate to see it a bunch, and so we started throwing these big baits, uh, the big uh, super spooks, and that sort of thing. And I would see these bass come up after these big gizzard shad, and I would start to keen on that. So let's talk. Mm. Let, let's go from then to now. So I'm starting my mornings out with that exact bait right there. I'm starting on not necessarily windblown points, but flat points. I'm looking, I'm, I'm keying in on areas that I know that these major creeks have got fish that have already finished spawning. Now there's gonna be some fish out there that have not spawned, but I know that like, I know for a fact that some of these creeks, cause this one right here has probably caught half the fish that I'm catching, he just sight fished for them. So I'm catching those fish when they're back out and they're feeding, okay? Um, Early in the morning, I'm starting to see the thread fin, and that's been going on for a week, two weeks. Yeah. Starting to see the thread fin. Uh, yeah, but they're real sporadic. Like, it's not, the thread fin deal is like, there's a few isolated areas where you can go, like, catch them on a thread fin deal, but it's yeah. not just like where you just go running a bunch of points. And, and you, you know, need to see the birds. Now, the, when you're seeing the, the herrings and the white birds, those are eating the little thread fins. When you see the loons, and, and, and I don't want to tell you guys the loons are a big deal. I think they're very important, and they definitely help, but... I haven't seen a loon in like three days, and we're catching a bunch of big fish during, throughout the day. So I'm throwing that bait. I'm throwing it all over the place. I'm looking for main lake points, and I and I could be fishing secondary points. So that that's a question of my. Are you just fishing main lake points? I am because I've only got eight hours a day, and I've got so many main lake points that I'm fishing that I'm only I'm, I'm kind of making a milk run. I'm, I'm fishing one if I catch them. Um, I'll, I'll catch three, four, two, whatever I catch, and as soon as it stops, I leave, and to try to let it replenish or let whoever's going to pull it behind me catch theirs, and then I'll come catch mine <laughs> later on, and then I'm running on, and so I'm keeping that bait on. I'm also throwing a swim bait, uh, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, but I'm, I'm running all over the lake throwing that bait, and, and all I'm doing is I'm throwing up real shallow, and I'm walking the dog. Is everybody familiar with walking the dog? Um, and I'm varying my cadence. Sometimes I do a wide walk, just walk all the way over. And that, that bait's got a, got one big um, bead in it, so it, it just goes click, click, click. And as dirty as our water is right now, it, it's drawing them up. Now, a lot of times, and this is something new for me, but the glide bait would be killer right now. Um, but the, the water is just really dingy, so that glide bait doesn't make any noise. They're not seeing it. I saw one that was probably 10 pounds yesterday. Eat a, shad and I threw it right beside it I mean 
as close as, as Billy is to right here, and that fish just didn't see the, the glide bait. I watched the whole deal, and it just didn't see and my And the bait. big advantage for a glide bait is it draws fish yeah. in. Well, when the water's dirty, it can't draw as many fish in. And that bait right there draws fish in. And we're catching yeah. big but fish. But that draws by noise. Like Tuesday, we had like a 10 or 11 pounder that ate that thing and jumped about three times and then got stuck in the stump and broke off. Um, but we're still catching some seven, eight, nine pound fish on that bait. Uh, as the sun starts to get up, that slows down a little bit. If you got a little bit of chop, you can still get some bites on that. Um, but when it's real calm and it's not a good chop, if it's just a little rolling wind, I'm not really throwing that a bunch. I'm going to a Carolina rig, and I'm throwing a Carolina rig flute now. I was throwing a lizard a little bit. I just stopped I've been throwing the lizard. Carolina rig baby brush out. Yeah, and I, and I don't think that matters. <laughs> uh, I've been catching them on a fluke, and we're catching. What's up, man? What rod are you using? That? Okay, that's that's a good question. Thanks for bringing that up. I'm throwing a fiberglass rod. I'm throwing a 7.2 medium heavy with 15 pound monofilament line. A lot of people will throw braid. Um, I'm not a I'm not a topwater braid guy. Some people are, some people aren't. You know, sweet tea, unsweet tea. I guess I don't know. I throw monofilament line. Uh, I'm throwing a 7.4 to one uh, reel just to kind of keep the cadence, but. Um, I, I am throwing the smaller version some. Now, when I'm throwing that smaller version is when I'm seeing a lot more thread fin activity. And I'm catching some big fish on it. Like I've caught two seven pounders this week on that bait right there, um, the smaller version. But I'm primarily throwing that big one. And, and, and it's because I'm trying to get those fish that are keyed in. And the Carolina rig, and the guys today asked me why, you know, it doesn't make any sense. We pull up to a point. so. This is how important this deal is. There's a boat on this point, and I know that there's fish on this point. So I sit off this point and tell my guys, let's catch sand bass until he moves. And his question is, well, when that guy moves, don't you think he probably caught the fish right there? And, my, <laughs> and I'm like, no, probably not. But you're not going to catch them all here. So he moves off, and as soon as we pull up, that fish, uh, we see a bait fish go thunk. Remember the thunk? <laughs> and in this one actually went thunk. It was weird. Um, like he snapped his fins at you, Wayne? I don't know. They just thunk. <laughs> but but I, we heard it thunk, and then and this giant bass just comes right out after him. And so I grabbed the Carolina rig, and the question was, why would you grab the Carolina rig and not the walking bait? Well, the walking bait, the sun was really, really high. We didn't have hardly any wind, and they can see that so well in that shallow, skinny water. And we're throwing up on the bank. Um, and we grabbed the Carolina rig, and I, I hung up in a tree got loose and had one take off with it and lost it but it was huge we saw it it was a huge fish and just a few minutes later my customer catches a seven pounder same thing now here's the kicker we pulled the seven pounder in and guess what's in his throat big gizzard shad about this long and so i don't i don't quite understand why um the carolina rig works but i know it does now on the carolina rig i'm throwing i'm throwing a seven six heavy action rod with extra fast tip i'm throwing a one ounce weight with 20 pound main line, 17 pound leader. I'm throwing about a four foot leader, a three aught round bend hook, and a watermelon red fluke. Magnum or just? Just, just the regular fluke. Regular. I know, it's weird. You would think the magnum, but I catch them on that, and I catch them on the baby brush hog, and I catch them on a lizard. Um, and I catch them on whichever one I'm catching. Like, I just, you know, I got on the lizard. You that big magnum. I know, I know, but I don't, it doesn't, I know, it doesn't make any sense to me, but it works. And um, and we're catching some big, I caught one in, uh, one day this week that was real, real big on, on the little bitty fluke. And I think what happens is it's an opportunity, you know, bass are opportunists, they see something easy, it's in their face, they're just swimming by, they're just going to suck it up. They suck it up, next thing they know, they're getting pictures taken of them. The big deal is, I think, you know, if, if there's any sense to be made of it, it is that a little bait, like a fluke, or a baby brush hog. It doesn't have a whole lot of movement to it. It's not a real active bait. It's not a crank bait or anything like that. It doesn't make any noise. It doesn't give me any negative cues. Right. And it's small. That's it's true. an easy meal. And it's like, why does a Senko work? You might know. It looks like a stick. Because <laughs> it's a Senko. It's because it gives them no negative cues. It's because it's slow, it's easy, and there's nothing to tell them don't eat it. So they eat it because bass will eat anything. So when you got a bass that's in a feeding mood and you throw a bait up there that's moving slow and it's no negative cues, and they just yeah. jump on it. You know, and, and uh, so back to the areas I'm fishing. I'm fishing main lake points at the mouth of spawning pockets, okay? And it might be way out in front of a spawning pocket. It might be an island at the front of a creek with a point on it. But I, but I don't necessarily want a steep drop. I've got one spot in particular that I'm catching a lot of big fish. But... 
I think I think this particular spot's got a little bit more of a thread fin spawn going on uh, early in the morning. Those fish are kind of hanging out, but I'm fishing really flat areas off the the points, and there's a whole lot of gravel. There's stumps. There's rock. There's shell. Uh, there's one area that's kind of shallow, and you can kind of see at the bottom pretty good. There's a whole lot of rock and a whole lot of shell and a whole lot of what I call sticker stuff. It's just old roots. Um, and, and the biggest deal is you need a hard bottom. So if you pull up there and you start dragging that Carolina rig and it's mush, you need to pick your trailer motor up and leave because you're in the wrong spot. If you throw it down there and it feels like you're coming through the Walmart parking lot, you found a good spot. Um, I don't, the birds are important at times, but I'm telling you now, I'm, there's most of my spots don't have birds. How deep are you? Real shallow. I'm, I'm power pulling down and throwing up to the bank. Um, and as the day goes on, those fish are gonna start to, well, not as the day, excuse me. As the as the season goes on, they're gonna start to drift out, but we're catching them two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon in that much water um, on a Carolina rig. And and that's the special deal. So I, I, I'll end with this story. I had some customers in the boat with me one day and we were, we were fishing up pretty shallow and we were throwing a big, it's not a glide bait, but it's a multi-jointed bait that floats called a Spro BBZ-1. And this is 2011, I think. And um, it was a bluebird day, almost no wind. And I was just like running around trying to find one of these schools of these nomadic bass that roam this lake looking for gizzard shad. Has anybody ever seen the videos where the whales chase seals? They get them up on the icebergs and they like knock them off. And kill. I think that's kind of how this deal goes down. So you got a big nomadic school of six to God knows how big fish. And I've seen this like a hundred times. And they, they, they chase these schools of gizzard shad and they get one of them to break off. And they, they key in on that one and they push it up shallow and they grab that, that one bait fish. So me and two guys are in the boat. Me and the front dude have both got these big swim baits and the back dude's got a Carolina rig. Well, here it goes. Bluebird sky, middle of the day, thunk. That thunk. <laughs> I'm gonna call you tonight and just go funk. <laughs> so this and he really is. That's <laughs> so this 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 shad jumps out of the water, and I'm telling you folks, it erupted. It looked like somebody threw dynamite in the water, and these fish just started going crazy after one shad. And me and the front dude fire out there at the same time, and our baits go bam, and we start twitching them. Boom boom. We both got a fish. The guy in the back of the boat's got the Carolina rig. I feel this, which means the guy somebody just hit the hook. Or some big boy just walked. The guy in the back of the boat's bowed up on one. I don't know what to do. Everybody's got a big one. I had an eight and a five on my on my bait at the same time. He's got the guy next to me's got like a six or seven pounder, and the guy in the back of the boat's got like a six or seven pounder. So we're reeling these fish in, and I've got a net with four bass in it, and there's a swarm of bass under my boat doing circles like bees around the hive. And it opened my eyes that day. I'm going, oh my god, this is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen in my life. That's what's going on, and that I don't like well, that. To... You correct me if I'm wrong. That was an extreme case because in 2011, every fish on the lake was doing that. So at the same time, I think if you because the lake was real. I, here's what I think. I think if you get on this deal right now, and everything's right, and the water's clear enough, that happened. I had one yesterday that I was throwing that big bait right there, and this fish just came up and grabbed it, and I pulled it in, and there was another one as big, and this was seven, as big or bigger, right there with it. And I get it in, and then the back of the boat, I feel. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We got, we got, I don't know if it's the same fish, but I like to think it probably was. We got that one on a Carolina rig. And I don't know if there's anything under it, because I can only see this far under the water. But these these schools of bass, and, I, and, the, and I'm not talking about a lot of bass. I'm not talking about 20 bass. I'm talking about like six, seven, eight bass, but they're all this big. Um, and, and they just chase these bait. And this was like June. This deal, I don't think this deal necessarily stops. When that water starts to get, man, 55, 60 degrees, I think they start to get out there and kind of chase these gizzard shed around. And it's a special deal. You gotta have the right bait though. I think this bait, when that water gets warm, that bait's really good. And then I think a Carolina rig right now is really good. Some and bait can be. That's, you're gonna talk about that, so. Mm -hmm. Anyways. All right, man. Well, I got to run. I know you do. Thank you. I hope that helps somebody catch a big one. We're catching some giant fish. And I've got some few days open in May. I've got some days open in June. This deal's not going to slow up. When they move out deep, it's going to get even better. That's that's kind of one of my – that's in my wheelhouse. So i uh, love to fish somebody out there on YouTube land. Anybody in here? i got some open dates, so I'd love to have you.
All right, brother. All right, I know you have to I'll go, man. Thank I'm going to watch my kids. All right. All right, brother. I appreciate you bringing Thanks me this. Thanks for coming. I appreciate you giving me this bait, dog. Uh, <laughs> is that, is I'm about to give you something else. All right, man. All right, y'all have a good night. Thanks. Thanks. All right.